Hey everybody, uh, today we're going to tinker around a little bit with my T-Bar slash Gudgeon tank. I also have uh, six Marcy Rainbow Fish in there. And if you've been following along with my videos, you know I've been trying to work on the water circulation in there. I had a power head uh, that I installed the other day. It's 425 gallons per hour. Uh, I did misspeak in the video I shot about it. I said something about like 500 times the volume of water moving around the tank. And I meant 500 gallons per hour and roughly 10 times the volume of water circulating around the tank. So at any rate, I wound up moving the power head and I repositioned it so it's flowing across the back of the tank. And we'll see if we can get a look at where it's positioned now. Oh, uh, let's see, it's down sort of low in the tank, there you can kind of see it. So it's positioned on the side glass facing parallel to the back glass and it's just sort of blowing down and across the back. What I was concerned about originally was the way I first had it positioned, it left sort of what I'll think of as a Sargasso Sea. Uh, kind of in the middle of the tank. It was a sort of swirling dead zone where all of the detritus was being deposited and it was just accumulating there. So after I switched the position of the power head, I didn't clean any of that detritus up. I just left it in the tank and I wanted to see what would happen to it. And you can see it's pretty much gone. That center area where the little few strands of um, micro swords are still growing. Uh, you can actually see that there's not a lot of detritus in there, especially compared to what we saw in the video yesterday or the day before, whenever that was. You can also see a lot of water flow and movement across the back there. So what we are going to do tonight is we are going to move that plant. I know I went through all that pain in the butt uh, trying to get it established because the T-bar kept digging it up. But I'm going to move it once again. I don't really think it's necessary. We've got plenty of lush green in the tank. And as time goes on, I can possibly even uh, put some other stuff in there. Maybe, you know, some Java or something on those rocks. There's, uh, you know, there's options in the future. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to move that um, plant in the back, the temple plant. I don't know exactly if I'm going to leave it in the tank and just reposition it or I'm going to remove it all together, but that is going to get removed and I'm going to put a couple of rocks in there. I've actually got the rocks upstairs preparing right now. I did shoot a brief video discussing the rocks and the algae that was on them. So they are preparing at the moment. In about an hour when they're done, uh, I'm going to put them in the tank and I'm going to do something specific with them and there's a reason I'm putting them in here and we can go over that once I get them established. Uh, the way I am preparing them right now is I've sprayed them down uh, for hydrogen peroxide and I've been doing that for, I don't know, maybe an hour. I've been keeping them moist with hydrogen peroxide. So that's enough that it's gotten everything soft again and then I went up and I put them in my oven at a low temperature, about 300 degrees. Uh, I'm going to leave them there for about an hour. I want that temperature to go all the way through, but I don't want the rocks to get really, really hot really, really quickly. Um, if you have moisture trapped inside rocks and you get them really hot really fast, sometimes that moisture can, uh, you know, vaporizes and it tries to expand so rapidly you can actually wind up having rocks explode, so to speak, in your oven or if you throw rocks in a fire, uh, sometimes this can happen. doesn't happen very often, but it is something that could happen. So we're going to take our time and slowly heat those rocks up to about 300 degrees and that should certainly kill off any organisms that are living on them. Uh, so in a little while we'll get back down here and we'll get this tank uh, situated and we can discuss exactly why I did what I did and I'll show you what I did when I'm there. Alright, here's the rocks we're going to be using. I've finished preparing them. Uh, I did let the temperature run all the way up to 400 degrees. I kept them in the oven at about 300 for about an hour and then I cranked it up to about 350 for about a half an hour and then eventually I ran it up to about 400 degrees and I left them in there for another 20 minutes or so at that temperature and then after an hour of sitting cooling down they were still way too hot for me to even touch uh, so I had to pick them up carefully put them in cold water uh, and cool the rocks down and then I was able to scrub them off they were very covered in dried sort of baked on algae 
that came right off very easily once I got done treating them. So I'll attach a card right here and you can see the little short video I did of these rocks before I began preparing them and you'll see the huge difference, especially on this one. This one had a rock that had been laying on top of it so there was a clean spot and then the whole outside was green with algae and as you can see it just cleaned up beautifully. So once everything was dead it just basically brushed right off with a soft bristle brush. So now it's time to go put them in the tank. Uh, I'm not going to show you the process of doing all that stuff. We'll just get right to what looking, <clears throat> excuse me, looking at what they look like uh, in situ. So give me a second and we'll be over at the tank. All right, everybody. I had a slight change of plans once I actually got in there and started tinkering around with stuff. The rocks were a little bigger than I thought. So the purpose of the larger, squarer looking rock, the more structural rock as I like to think of them, was to be a support rock. That was going to lie on its side and then that sort of flat triangular rock was actually going to be my fin, if you will, the directional rock. And what I planned on doing was setting it up right in the back. You can see where I actually took the larger rock and I set that up on its edge. I opted not to move the plant the way I've got the power head or the uh, spray bar it's the first section is spraying down and that is actually spraying down into the plant so that is going to help prevent a bunch of detritus building up around the base of that plant down there and we'll keep it moving off to our right and over towards where the filter intake is so that'll be okay with that plant still being there this rock is actually put in there at a slight angle and it's pretty obvious what's happening there. The water's flowing down and some of it is being caught by that rock and directed out here right through the middle of the tank. So you can see the way the detritus is moving through there now. So I want to see how this is going to impact the tank. We'll give it a few days of watching it like this and seeing how that keeps the tank clean. And if we have to make any more adjustments, we can go from there. None of this stuff is set in stone, no pun intended. Uh, it's easy to get in there and just move things around and try something different if it doesn't work out. Uh, I also took the sort of flat triangular rock and I placed it right there. And if you'll notice on both of these rocks, this triangular rock especially, I have a lot of space between it and the back glass. So most of the water is flowing right past. Say hello to my little friend. Most of the water is flowing straight past that and into this larger rock. But some of it is being caught by this rock and you can probably see some of the sand sort of swirling around right there at the base of the rock from the current. So some of that is being directed through this cave system and that will also help prevent a bunch of detritus settling in in the bottom of these caves where there might not necessarily be a lot of water flow. So I know it definitely changed the way the water has flown through the tank and now I'm starting to see some waste accumulating up here. It's going to be one of those only time will tell sort of situations. We might find that we get another dead zone somewhere else in the tank because of the way I've moved the current around and have it flowing in yet another direction. So we might go back to the way I had it when we first set up this uh, video. Uh, because it seemed to me like it was doing pretty good under those circumstances. That little spot in the middle was cleared away and everything looked good. So we'll see. Like I said, none of this stuff is, you know, etched in granite or anything. We can always just get in there and pull those rocks out and move them and shift stuff around. Uh, that's one of the interesting things about this hobby is you can just keep, you know, modifying it and learning and trying new things and seeing what works better and what works, you know, worse and so on and so forth. So we'll be back to this in a few days. Make sure you're subscribed. That way you don't miss any of the updates I got coming up on this tank, plus all the other stuff I'm working on right now. This is, again, my T-Bar slash Gudgeon tank. So there's plenty of uh, videos in this playlist, and you might want to watch some of the other ones besides this. So thanks again for watching this one. See you real soon on the next one.